guy. All right, we are in the van. We're gonna be welding with explosive thermite. We have two different sites and various sizes of charges. We have all of our explosive charges back there, our molds. We're also gonna be installing some capacitors and some sewer pump motors. All right, are you ready? Tell us. I'm ready. Go ahead. Get down, get down, get down. Um, I feel very tight up here. I feel like I'm very high up, but it looks like I'm gonna be working out of this for a few weeks. You know, one part of me was thinking that I was overdue for a car accident. Almost all of my coworkers have banked something up at some point. I went the longest without a crash, so of course mine had to be something kind of serious. Although some of our coworkers have taken the front end off of trucks. You know, it makes me think back, is there anything I could have done differently? I was driving at a very normal speed because one job canceled out on me and so I only had one job left for the day. So I was kind of just chilling, driving, thoughts to myself. When she started pulling out, as soon as I saw she was pulling out, I immediately started braking. Immediately started slowing down, although it was kind of too late at that point. If she would have saw me, she could have very easily stopped right there and I would have skid right by her. Okay, I did my best for today. It's not perfect. I kind of want another one of these on this side. This box is actually lagged and bolted onto this. So we'll see how that holds. It's a rental van. So I've managed to bolt everything together without making any new penetrations onto the metal. These boxes still need to be organized. Got some of my important stuff over here. Cord the tools. Just simply so I can at least work. I mean, I can't do anything if I just have to crawl over toolboxes to do anything. I got my bins with a lot of my fasteners here. I got this thing where I can put some bins that may or may not survive transit. Electrical metering gear here. All right, we're in the van. We're gonna be welding with explosive thermite. We have two different sites and various sizes of charges. We have all of our explosive charges back there, our molds, and plenty of bare copper wire. We're also gonna be installing some capacitors and some sewer pump motors. Exciting. Nene's pissed. So here's what we got. We have a ground rod, this ground wire. They've been disconnected. We have a couple ideas of what to do. We need to dig this back and either A, what the guys at the office suggested is we dig this back, we drive a new ground rod like right underneath it, and then we clean off the wire and then put our mold right on it like that, okay. and then just weld it right onto a new ground rod. Or idea B, this was kind of my idea, but to be honest, both ideas have their pros and cons, would be to simply expose enough of this and then weld a run and tap piece onto it and then just go and like re-tap onto this. I suppose on one hand, this has like slag and old yeah. weld around it. So it might be hard to get the, the mold actually on this existing ground rod. So maybe we should drive a new one. Oh, Either way. This probably won't be that hard. It's pretty soft up here. It looks like pretty soft dirt. So let's start digging it back and we'll go from there. So we're gonna drive a ground rod, probably about right here. Clean off the ground wire. And that might be as simple as doing one weld there. This is very soft dirt, so the ground rod should go pretty easily. What kind of an electrician are you? Do, you? do you pull out the roto hammer drill right away and just drive it? Or do you, do you give the chance with the sledgehammer first? Is it just laziness? I don't know. I've always found that unless it has any trouble to it, it's just easier to do it this way. We're going to clean all these off, wire brush them up, and then get our CAD weld thermite gear ready. 
So the wire has to be ultra clean so that none of the metals and the dirt or anything conflict with the chemical process. We also want to make sure there's no moisture. And we're going to use a propane torch to make sure that there's no moisture on anything. We have our molds, we have our igniter, and we have our thermite charges, which we'll get into in a little bit. So this is 4 out to 5 8 copper clad rod. See a little ground rod there? It uses a 115 size charge. Okay, so here is our mold. You're pretty familiar with thermite welding, right? The charge goes on the top here. We're going to insert this mold into one of these handles. In fact, could you maybe find the one you think might be the right one? I think it's that yellow one. So this device is going to go on here, which is going to clamp it shut. As you can see, that's where it goes on the rod and the wire goes through it. So you have rod sits here, wire goes through there, you put the whole thing together and then the charge melts into here and then forms this welding bond on it. it has these set screws. You don't want to put any set screws into the material of this itself because it's really brittle. This is made out of graphite, the same stuff that goes in your pencil. Okay, so here we go. This allows us to put our clamp to clamp on there and then we'll put the charge in here, close it, ignite the charge and run the mold with a torch so that there's zero moisture in there. Okay, so I have my mold here. We have it, it's been heated up so that all the moisture's gone. This has been heated up. I don't think it's still hot. Let's get this clamped on to the actual ground wire. And then we'll move this over and we'll set it on the ground rod. You don't want to put too much pressure on anything because like I said, the graphite mold is is um, delicate. So now we have the mold on top. This is all the way pressed down on the ground rod and it's all the way clamped around the ground wire. The ground wire has been cleaned, wire brushed, so there's no dirts or metals messing with the process. So as you can see, we have all different sizes of premix charges. You used to have to mix these by hand and create a mold with putty and all this stuff. These are extremely fast. You could do like a hundred of these in a couple hours on some sites charge in like that now we have the igniter go ahead and give me not that side but this side and go ahead and extend that wire out as far as you can go all right tell us you ready you got your safety glasses on we're about to ignite a thermite weld on this ground rod so we've ran our wire far away. All you have to do, tell us, is press and hold this button. It'll start beeping, and then as soon as the button gets solid, we're going to have our thermite weld explosion. Now, assuming we prepped this thing adequately, there should not be any violence or action, although this guy might be cooked. Yeah, yeah, run away. Run away, little cockroach. It should be a very controlled situation. Now. Before we do this, let's quickly discuss what we're going to do after because there are a couple things you need to do so that the mold is reusable. So let's discuss that. First, we're going to get our gloves, which we brought, some hardcore gloves. When this is done, we're going to come over, we're going to remove this, we're going to unclamp this mold, and then we're going to use our screwdriver carefully, again, not to scratch it, and a little fine paintbrush to just quickly remove any remaining parts of the debris and then to dust it off so that nothing hardens on there and makes the mold unusable. All right, are you ready, tell us. I'm ready. Go ahead. Whoa. All right, that is not supposed to be good. That might have actually been a dud. Let's see if we have another charge. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
right here. So that one worked. What I'm gonna do is remove the igniter, open this up, move this one up inside there. See that heat? That's gonna be hot for a while. We wanna ignore that. Looks like all of our debris came off. So I'm just gonna brush it off with a, with a little with a little fine tooth paintbrush and should be ready to use for the next one. Okay, so this thing got to thousands of degrees, maybe even more, while it was igniting. So I'm gonna make sure not to touch this with my hands. This graphite dissipates heat really well, but it's still gonna be super hot for a good 10 minutes at least. All right, moving on. We got our cock swinging around back there. So we have two priorities today. One, they want a conduit from their fiber box. If you want to see CAD welding in more detail and with bigger wire, check out my last video. And then Have you ever wondered what happens if you just blow these up without any mold? Each one of those I believe is good for 50 uses before it needs to be replaced. 